Yeah, if you were to do a, say, no-till vegetable garden, how would they do weed control? Yeah, like a, if, especially if it's organic. Right. Um, well, it's, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, did you do like those crimpers and stuff that look like the have the rollers? Crimpers, yeah. Rollers uh, a lot of new techniques come down the pike, but you know, keep in mind that um, one of the issues with a uh, uh, no-till uh, is, right, I guess it, it sounds funny to say, but everyone would rather do things easier than harder. And if you could plant corn, I always use corn as an example, just driving across the field once with one of these no-till planters. By the way, no-till planter allows you to just come up, literally come up to a cornfield, or a field that's going to be corn, and if it's fairly clear, just drive across it, plant the corn seed, and go away, and the corn grows great. It's a big idea. So it really saves on labor compared to coming up to this field, plowing it, so you're flipping all that soil over. It turns out it weighs six inches of soil on a whole acre. Everybody knows it weighs two million pounds. So if you plow an acre of land six inches deep, you just move two, two million pounds of soil. So that takes time. The operator has to do it, so somebody has to be paid that labor. It takes that tractor, the gas, um, and all that work of not damaging the soil, but just stirring the soil so, so, so heavily. Then you still got to come back and disc the soil back down, you know, to prepare for the planter to get it smooth again. So it's a lot of gas and a lot of effort. So again, the no-till guys on the far end, these are just extremes. I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong. But the no-till guys say, well, wait, I'm alone here on the farm, and it's easy for me. I, I can do it myself. I don't need a crew of guys. One guy to plow, one guy to fit it down with a disc, another guy to harrow it, another guy to plant it. It's just me on the farm, so I just drive across once, and the corn's in the ground. The other guys are like going back and forth. They're stalled by rain. It's a lot of work, a lot of fuel. And this guy's saying, oh, I'm done. I'm on to the next field. Again, it's kind of ideal world scenario. But the problem with all that is you can't do it on soil that's <laughs> all degraded, like this one. We saw the, the one soil here, the soil from the fence row. You could do that if you sprayed it off with Roundup and killed all the, the grass on it, for example. <laughs> This soil is so nice, has such great tilth. The corn planter would go across that, put seed down into that beautiful tilth, and the corn would come up and grow great, and you'd be all set. You'd be, you'd be proud of yourself. You'd be able to say, yeah, I didn't have to do all that. But that soil is in really good condition, really good health. Now, another soil that's just been used hard, so, right, the new truck, you can get away with anything. But a truck that's a little older, you have to lift it a little bit to shut the door. This is what the soil that's getting plowed and fitted the sort of condition it's in. So it, it requires more effort. So if you tried to plant that soil, even though it's been plowed for several years and fitted down and planted to corn, if you tried to plant that with no-till, it won't work. It'll fail because the soil is what we call addicted to tillage. It needs that. It's not in such good shape. It's kind of beat up a little bit. It's an older truck. If you don't know how to shut the door, you bang, bang, won't shut. Well, lift it. But all that extra effort is what all the plowing is. So you can't just you know, throw the door and walk away, a new vehicle, it closes, it works. That's the no-till. A soil that's, or a car that's a little older that needs, needs all this extra work, this soil requires that extra effort. So part of the idea of increasing the soil health is this resiliency anyways to weather extremes, but also it cuts down on labor. If you could get the soil, so you have the, the no-tillers will say, the earthworms are doing the work for me. So if you can, the, the goal of all this is for these no-tillers, they get their soil in a really good condition of being very gentle and very careful, not plowing, adding manure at just the right time, what have you, growing cover crops. And then they can get away with this single, with all this labor savings, because their soil's in really good condition. And any time, isn't a new version of that truck better than the old version of the truck? Not necessarily. I mean, in the hands of a good driver or a good operator, it doesn't matter. Nonetheless, it's, it is a better position to be in to have the one in better condition and better health. So not only is soil health and the soil quality something that's um, necessarily going to give you higher yields, we don't necessarily think in terms of higher yield. We think in terms of cost savings, uh, needing less, maybe less chemicals because the plants are just healthier, saving time, uh, effort, uh, having the rain go in on the healthy soil, it just percolates in nice instead of not going in. So if, if you were irrigating, you'd save money. Not that anyone irrigates. 
but the sort of thing where it's just you're just in better you're just in a better position to have a soil that's in um, at the at the peak of its of its health rather than the lower part of its health. So one last question. And then we'll... yeah. On the on the no-till, I've read that <coughs> years of no-till can lead to soil compaction mm -hmm. issues. Is is there any oh, solid that... information on that? Or for sure, uh, no, it's another thing. You know, when it, when you use the truck, even if you're very gentle, it will wear. And you know, no-till is kind of trying to minimize your impact, your footprint on the ground, and trying to go a little more gentle. That's the big idea. Nonetheless, the truck still wears. And no-till, like, like anything, you've got all this heavy machinery going over the field. Sometimes it's wet. You've just you've got to go. The, there's even more rain coming. The crop's standing. You'll need, you'll need flotation tires if you don't go now. Right. Damage happens even from using it. The truck wears. Right. Um, but what you can do, and thanks to some of these new technologies, if you will, uh, I can't help but talk about it. We started to study this. Fully 10 years ago, these deep, what they call these deep rippers, right. Under Earth makes it the ripper, stripper, a lot of different names for them. Um, we call it focused tillage. So rather than tilling, for example, an entire field, all the way across, every square inch gets flipped over, some of these uh, reduced tillage methods focus the tillage. So zone? zone tillage, yeah. Oh, okay. So you focus your tillage to a zone. So you run these shanks through the ground, right where the cornrows are going to be, and everyone knows they're 30 inches apart, so that's almost three feet. Two and a half feet apart are these where the cornrows are going to be. So it's a special plow that's made. When you pull it behind, it just runs a shank every every cornrow. This is what makes this rip in the ground. You can go as deep as necessary. And it kind of prepares the seed bed. And it's got special discs and, and things behind it that kind of flatten the soil down and prepare it for planting. So it's kind of a hybrid system. You know, I talk about this mold board plowing that's kind of at one extreme that's it's really flipping everything over pounding the entire works down uh, it's pretty it's pretty uh, heavy duty work and at the other end is this no till you walk across the field once and the seeds in the ground that's kind of it those are the extremes most things as you know are somewhere in the middle they borrow from both like what they call these hybrid systems so these sort of systems these inline zone till systems focus your tillage to where, where, right where the row is going to be. Do the disturbance there. I was saying before, when the seed germinates then, it's this infant plant, well, it's, it's right in the till zone. So you're helping it out, the soil's softer, you've loosened it with plowing. Then as the plant gets bigger, it can move into that untilled zone between this, these tilled strips. Again, that's still no till in there. And so you're kind of jump-starting or <laughs> right, you're not undoing all that um, surface uh, development that you've had over the years with no-till. Remember, the no part of the no-till philosophy as well is the creatures that are living at the surface want to stay at the surface. That's why they're there. If you put them down, you flip them down, they'll die. Their bodies will break. You know, all that goo will come out. But of course, we want to manage that. We don't, might not want it all to happen at once. A good example would be gasoline. A gallon of gasoline could keep me warm all day by burning it slowly, or I could have a big explosion that's not going that's it's the same gallon of gasoline, but I'm using it differently. So when we plow, it's very violent. All all these things happen, all these <laughs> creatures are dying, is, is how the no-till guys talk about it, and I like it. Versus, well, we'll we'll gently stir the soil. And if I have to do a little of this, not truly no-till, but a little bit of focused tillage, gentle tillage, just where I'm gonna need it, I kind of hybridize my system. I can still keep most of my surface creatures at the surface doing what they do best. Most of my subsurface creatures down there are doing what they do best. Sure, I want to kill, so to speak, kill some of them or have them die so they can do all those, so those balloons can burst and I can take advantage of all that. But if I do it too fast or have too much of it at once, then it's just too much of a good thing. It's more than the soil can actually use. And then later when I need a little more, the gasoline's already been blown. I don't have it to, to go slow. Thank you.